Friends, ladies and gentlemen, I have prepared a 15-page article because I thought it's a very complicated subject and certainly I wouldn't get time to present perhaps even the crucial ones. So if anybody would like to have it, kindly give me their email because that's the only form of communication a retired scientist can afford. Please give me the email, I will send it to all of you. Now, I have called this paper Indo-US Nuclear Agreement a Techno-Political Evaluation. I consciously did it because when I wrote I was not very sure, but now after coming here, I was indeed privileged to share the platform with two of my former colleagues from the Department of Atomic Energy, with a former Prime Minister, a very distinguished former Justice of the Supreme Court, distinguished political leaders. Believe me, it is a very, very unique saga which we have undertaken. We can't afford to ignore it. So, partly I have tried in my own humble way to give an evaluation which I call a techno-political evaluation. I mention this because based on our experience for decades in this field, plus also you know, one of the persons who described nuclear technology as an unforgiving technology, I'm sure Dr. Prasad and the population will know this was used by Professor Weinberg, one of the pioneers of nuclear energy. He described it as an unforgiving technology. It is such an involved one and it continues to fascinate everybody connected with it in some form or other. Not only the scientists, the whole society. As he himself said, it was described as a Faustian alternative. Those who strive, there shall be salvation. That is a Faustian alternative. So that, that is a field which continues to excite me even though now I am an old man, retired just uh, scientist. Number two, this field has been developed in our country with great pains and efforts by its founder father, Homi Baba, who came out with a new model of development science of technology in India, which he called the growing science. Those who are interested, I would request you, this is the last lecture which he delivered before he left to Vienna, where unfortunately he passed away. Very well known, very famous lecture, in which he brought this concept of growing science. I have written something about it in my article. And we should remember it was this growing science concept which Vikram Sarabhai took it to ISR and it is from the same thing in a different way our great former president Kalam took it to DRDO and wherever we have been able to bring in and synergize all our efforts. This country has brought name to this in the world. So this growing science is a concept which has to be preserved at all costs. We can't afford to ignore it. Now what is this growing science? How did he develop it? It's a very exciting story because politically if you look at it, not many has written on this line, so if I am wrong, I am willing to get corrected. 
On the political side, after our independence, we know the great contribution of Nehru Krishna Menon concept of non-alignment and disarmament. Now, what is this non-alignment? We have to learn science and technology from as many countries as we find useful. And we have to chalk out a developmental strategy such that we benefit, as Dr. Prasad said, not by importing. But in growing science, he uses a very excellent analogy. Imported technology gives you an assisted takeoff. These are all the words of Omi Baba. But it shall never make you capable of independent flight unless and until you develop science and technology of our own. This combination of import of technology with our own indigenous R&D, this is the basis of our Department of Atomic Energy and our Department of ISRO and much smaller way Department of DRDO. Of course in the area of missiles. Now, what I am saying is this I would consider as the SNT counterpart of our non-alignment policy in industries. We talk about BHEL. Who gave BHEL to us? Originally it was Czechoslovakia. When nobody was willing to give us technology for manufacture of heavy electrical engineering goods, it was Czechoslovakia who gave us. When nobody was willing to give us oil, Technology, the first refine, refinery, it was given by former Soviet Union. At the same time, when we had problem on food shortage, how did we implement the Green Revolution? We made use of our contacts with the United States. Now, if you take ISRO, there is an excellent book which has been brought out by none other than the former director of Vikram Sarava Space Center. His name is S.C. Uh, S.C. Gupta and the title is Growing Rocket Systems and the Team. You see how we work. Rocket Systems and the Team. You cannot have one without the other.